Okay. Sorry. Okay. So hopefully everybody is able to see my screen here. Um, like I said, welcome. We are so excited to have you guys here tonight. Um, we wish, just like everybody, we wish that we were in the auditorium. We wish that we could welcome you guys in person. And we are so excited to be able to do that with you guys next year, hopefully. I mean, the way it's looking now, of course. Um, but we wanted to at least offer you tonight so that you could see who we are, um, really get an idea of what Green Mountain has to offer, answer questions, and just give you the rundown of what your student is going to experience when they start high school with us. So um, welcome. All right, so first things first is I want to introduce you guys to your support team. Um, I, of course, am Miss Onkai, Kim Onkai. I am the school counselor. I work with the class of 2025, which means that I will get to uh, follow your students all the way through graduation. And that gives me the opportunity to really get to know students, get to know families, get to know stories, and really help individualize um, my services and my support. So, um, and I, we also have Dr. Trujillo here. Um, Dr. Trujillo, are you on? Do you want to say anything? I am on. Hey, class of 2025 and parents. <laughs> hey, welcome to Green Mountain High School. We are thrilled to have you here. Welcome. Absolutely. And then we also have uh, the one and only Ms. Owens, the Green Mountain principal, so Ms. Owens. Welcome everybody. Uh, we're glad that you're able to join us tonight and we are looking forward to getting what we've been through behind us and get a restart and we're really excited to have your kids with us and to get to know them. Welcome. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so first things first, um, obviously entering into a new school is, is difficult, especially one that you've, your student may not have ever been in. So we want you to know that we have lots of supports in place for you and your student. Um, and these are the people that you can turn to through the years. Um, first and foremost, they're teachers. Um, we have some incredibly supportive teachers here at Green Mountain. Um, I am always in awe that I can go to a teacher and say, hey, what can you do for this student? And 99% of the time, they're willing to bend over backwards and help them. Teachers are also our first line of defense. So if a student is, tr is struggling, um, they know, you know how, to, how to talk with them, how to offer them those supports, and then they always uh, communicate that with us so that we know who needs the additional follow-up and things like that. So teachers here are definitely looking out for your students. We also have, of course, Ms. Owens, uh, the principal. You just met her. Um, Dr. Trujillo is the class of 2025 assistant principal. She and I, like I said, we're the lucky ones who get to follow this class all the way through from beginning to end. But we also have three other assistant principals. Um, we have Mr. Craig, Ms. Serino, as well as Ms. Ketchum, all of whom are very available, willing to help, um, and we all work together as a team. We have four counselors at Green Mountain High School. Myself, I will be the ninth grade counselor. We have Ms. Oliver, who will be the 10th grade counselor next year, Ms. Kewen, who will be the 11th grade counselor, as well as Ms. Slaughter, who will be our 12th grade counselor. Um, we are also lucky to have our student engagement liaison. I might need Ms. Owens or somebody. I never say his name right, and I feel so bad for that. Um, I'll help you. Thank it's, you. It's Bari Abu Hadima. Abu Hadima. I'm sorry. I love Bari and, and I never get it right. So I apologize, but he is wonderful. He, you'll always see him walking around. He's helping students. He goes into classrooms, um, finds people. He makes sure that they're attending and he's kind of just um, the, the jack of all trades. Um, so you can always find him around well, willing to support. And then we have lots of other adults in our buildings or our building, including our paras, 
our um, DTL, our library support, we have a future center, I'll go through a lot of those things, but we have lots and lots of people in this building who are always welcome to step up and help and support. So don't ever hesitate to let us know what you guys need or your students need. Um, as far as a counselor, what do I do? Um, I usually describe my job as I'm here to get your student from point A to point Z and then all the way on be or beyond. And so anything that could potentially throw your student off track is where I step in and I put in my interventions. And so, you know, that could be um, graduation requirements. You know, maybe they're struggling in classes or they need help um, understanding what they need to do for graduation, planning for the future. Uh, we do a lot of that. We are gonna have a brand new, new and improved future center, which is really, really exciting. Um, obviously we do the academic guidance. We make sure that there's, their um, classes are scheduled correctly, that they're getting what they need um, and that they're on the right track to get where they want to go. And then of course there's the social emotional. So if your student is ever having a tough day or needing some extra support, um, help uh, resolving conflicts, anything like that, we are here uh, or I'm here to help you through that as well. The other really cool thing about Green Mountain, um, which I'm actually gonna let Ms. Owens speak to, is our amazing academy program that offers so much to our students and we are really proud of this. And I know that um, Ms. Owens uh, was at the heart of making this happen for Green Mountain. And so I wanted her to share a little bit about what our academy program is. Thank you, Kim. Uh, so about, oh boy, uh, 10 to 12 years ago, as the school staff, um, we started on this journey and of creating the academy program. And just to, for a little quick background, the, the academy model has been around for 30 some years. And those of you that are from the East Coast or the West Coast may be familiar with this. There are hundreds of academy model high schools around the nation. Here in Colorado, um, it's, it's Green Mountain High School and it's Castleview High School in Douglas County and one or two others um, in some of the rural parts of Colorado. But um, we, we truly are um, very different than, than a lot of schools. We are a comprehensive neighborhood high school, which means that we offer all of the academics, um, honors, advanced placement, all, all the whole gamut. We offer activities and, and clubs and all of that. And we offer our academy program. And so um, I'm, I'm not gonna read this slide to you. So as I'm talking, feel free to read the slide. But really what I want you to, to know is when you think about your student entering high school, um, think, think about really five things. Um, the first one is high school is very relational. And we, we have, uh, your students will be scheduled into something we call RAM time and they'll have a teacher that is their RAM time advisor. And that person will be their mentor, um, will help them navigate throughout the high school experience. They have their teachers, they have their peers. It's about building relationships. The second one is about engagement. And in the next few slides here, I'll talk to you about our, our pathways and the opportunities that we have in our academy program. And it doesn't work unless your student engages. And so um, getting involved in, in different activities and things that we call CTSOs, which are career and technical student organizations that we'll talk about in a minute. It's about get, doing internships and career shadows. And it's about learning um, what we call adulting, how to be an adult. Um, and, and everything that we do at Green Mountain has some type of leadership embedded into it. So leadership is critical and our kids need training in that and they need support in that. The third one is exploration. And it's, it's um, with our academy program, it's about career exploration. Um, we believe every one of your students, they're gonna get a high school diploma. We are gonna see to that. And also every one of them is gonna go into some career at some point. And, and we, we feel it's part of our responsibility, not just have, to have them academically ready, but that they're ready to, to figure out what career they wanna do and, and what industries they wanna be in. Um, it, could, it could be um, part of that step is going to college and we will help them with that, um, going into the military, trade schools, whatever your student wants to do. The fourth one is commitment. 
and really making high school count is a commitment and that's where you guys can partner with us we need our students to really understand that their commitment is what will get them that diploma and get them ready so their job is to earn credits and to um, you know make make the commitment to make those grades count um, to make school a priority and and to be proactive and to self-advocate for themselves those are, are key things we want them to learn and the last one is about their story and this is really about their story is beginning and um, the, the, the grades on a, on a transcript, they're called a GPA, grade point average, it matters. Um, engaging in our senior capstone, our seal of biliteracy and all the different things, including our pathways um, that they can get involved in, that's writing their story. Um, and then the last piece on this is just, I want you to know that we do care about, about your, your student. Um, they're not really kids anymore because they're going into high school. So your, your student, we, we care about them. We want to help and we want to be a partner with them. So um, Kim, if you go ahead and go to the next slide. So real quick here, we have um, four academies. So the first one is our arts, humanities and performing arts. Uh, what you see in the bulleted section. Um, so arts, humanities, performing arts is the academy. And then humanities, performing arts, and studio art and design are pathways. So under each academy, there are pathways. And each pathway is designed with specific courses aligned to that pathway that once students complete a series of courses in each pathway, then they would earn upon graduation an endorsement in a pathway in one of our academies. Um, most of the pathways are about four credits and they need 23 to graduate. So many of our students complete multiple pathways. We have a very strong um, arts, humanities and, and performing arts um, program at Green Mountain. Um, and it's, it's actually very well known of, of what we offer. The next one is our Business and Global Studies Academy. And so as you can see, that's the academy and the bulleted items are the pathways and then the co-curriculars that go along with it. Health and Human Services Academy, I will tell you, this is the one that we have most of our, um, our highest number of pathway completers are in health, and it may be just where we're located in the city, I don't know. A lot of our students are very interested in, in future careers in health and human services. And so you can see we have the pathways there and the co-curriculars. Last one there. And then our STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And you can see our various pathways there. Um, we actually had just had a, are still living through a, a multi-million dollar upgrade to our school. And from the outside, hopefully you've seen our new track and our new fields and our, our new gym going up. But we actually took one whole wing of the building and we have transformed it into a STEM fabrication lab. So there is now a state-of-the-art wood shop um, that actually is used for robotics and engineering as well. Um, there is a, we have a student-run business called Green Mountain Gear and Printing. We do all of our own RAM gear. We do banners, signs, posters for actually, it's, um, we do it for businesses in Lakewood and the surrounding area as well. And um, we have a lot of the 3D stuff and, and all of that kind of thing. This is a, also a very, very popular um, academy at our school and as soon as we can get you in the building we can't wait to show you all the new fun stuff we have relating to this keep going um, so another key component of an academy program is is having the things connected to it and so it's really about designing a high school experience that that our students can visualize and see so this class helps me with this instead of just oh i'm just taking this class for whatever everything has a purpose and we really try to work with with your students around under them understanding that algebra one does matter and here are the different ways that you can use it in the different careers that you can be in for example so i talked about our pathway endorsements in addition to that we have a, a senior capstone project and it really is a culmination of a, the 12 year education. So seniors um, pick a project, they have a mentor outside of school, they uh, do a paper and last Friday actually we did our presentations and it's a big deal for our seniors to present. And at some point we invite you to be on the uh, judges panel for those senior capstones. Um, in addition, our pathways, you can earn an endorsement, but you can also earn an endorsement with honors by completing a certain grade point average. 
and you can complete a Renaissance Scholar, which is completing pathways in multiple academies. Uh, we offer lots of opportunities to, for them to grow their, their career skills, um, such as shadows, mock interviews, internships, apprenticeships. Um, and then there's the state of Colorado has a STEM endorsed diploma uh, that has pretty strict requirements. This year, we're going to have seven of our seniors who are going to complete the STEM endorsed diploma. And that is a state seal on their diploma, as well as the seal of biliteracy is another one that is recognized by the state. I talked already a little bit about leadership, 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 leadership. We cannot talk enough about leadership. It's critical for, um, for our students and for the future of our world, really. Uh, but we have lots of leadership opportunities. So RAM Council is made up of grades 9 through 12. And those are students that I actually meet with on a regular basis. They're my go-to group of students. I bounce ideas off of them, get feedback, kind of get the pulse of the school. Our event planning committee, those of you that um, remember in high school, you had student senate or student leadership um, at Green Mountain. Uh, we call them event planning committee because those are actually um, careers they could go into. If you think about planning a wedding or planning any event, planning a prom, a homecoming, anything like that is right there in the same line. Our academy leadership student team are the students that help us with our academy program. There are ambassadors. If we were in person tonight, you would have seen them. They would have been giving tours, all kinds of things. National Honor Society and Sources of Strength. Um, you, our students can be outdoor lab leaders where they go to outdoor lab with the fifth graders in Jeffco. And we have a very strong idea club, which is our diversity and equity club of students. And it's, uh, it's, it's been, as you know, we've had a lot of discussion in our country uh, lately about this and, and our students are, are embracing um, the challenge and, and excited about um, learning more about diversity and, and equity and, and how we can make our world better. So keep going, Kim. Uh, so I talked a minute ago about the CTSOs is what we call them. So they're career and technical student organizations. So many, almost all of our programs are attached to what's called career and technical education, which is actually a federal program. So federal dollars come to the state of Colorado through something called Perkins. And in Colorado, Perkins dollars go to K-12 education, where in many states it only goes to community colleges. So we're lucky. So Green Mountain High School, um, I receive about an additional $200,000 in our budget every year because we offer um, career and technical education programs at our school. And so part of the requirements of, of having that is every one of our CTE programs must have a student leadership organization. So these are the student leadership organizations that we have at Green Mountain. So these students go and compete against other high school students in um, you know, medical billing to medical terminology to, to business planning, uh, you name it, and it happens through these organizations. Next. Awesome. Um, it's not going for me. Hold on. I think that's what I have. Um, is there anything else you want to add on that? Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, we have lots of information on our website about our academy program. The, the one thing that I hear from, from new students of, of that gets misunderstood, I guess, is the flexibility of the program. Um, freshmen will not be asked, in fact, we don't require students to apply for academies. They aren't required to do them. It really happens on the transcript and it happens over time. So really it's that senior year that we're talking to your student about what courses that they took while they were at the school and match them to our various uh, pathways and endorsements. Many of our students pull that book out and look at when they're registering for classes, matching it up with our pathways. But it's, it's, not, it's not like an application or you, 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 know, you can't do it. It's for everybody because every one of them is going into a career. So it's very flexible. So I just want to reiterate that. Thanks, Kim. Yeah. Hey, Mrs. Owens, um, there's a question in the chat. Um, will TSA hopefully be back next year? That is our plan for sure. Awesome. All right, thank you. Um, and kind of along with that, this slide is here to, um, to really help you understand how we set your students schedule. 
so that they have the opportunity to take advantage of as many things as possible. One of the most misunderstood things about high school um, scheduling is that it is all about getting graduation requirements. And, and I do have to say, obviously, we need to get you the graduation requirements, and it's important to understand what those are. But the way that high school is created, as you'll see here on this, the track to graduate, um, your freshman, your, the freshman year is a full class of required or a full schedule of required classes. It's seven cl classes. They're here all day long. They stay on campus. And that's really to get your student um, a foundation of how to be a student how to be successful, and also to make sure that they have a good um, jump off to, uh, to complete their requirements. Sophomore year, they get to take a, you know, one class off if they want, um, kind of start, or they can use that time to take an additional um, elective so that they can start to explore some of those interests and really dive into the academies and pathways. Junior year, if a student is on track in their freshman and sophomore year, they've, they've passed all their classes, they've followed the schedule that we've set forth, junior year is really where all of this work comes into play. Students by that point can apply to Warren Tech. You know, we work pretty closely with Warren Tech. Our Warren Tech students are awarded pathways based on what they do there. Um, and so they can apply to Warren Tech, they can apply to CareerWise and get an apprenticeship and actually get into the workforce. Um, and we'll actually create their schedule so that it makes it possible for them to get credits, um, fulfill graduation requirements, but also really take advantage of these opportunities. By the time they are a senior, that's the year, you know, if a student is completely on track, has passed everything, um, just done a stellar job all the way through, there's only two graduation requirements at that point, and that's you know English 12 and Econ. What that means is that the entire rest of their schedule is dedicated to taking those academy option classes, to taking classes that are required for higher education purposes, so getting into colleges or what those colleges might be asking them, those apprenticeship opportunities, co uh, or um, concurrent enrollment opportunities, like Ms. Owen said, we are here to help your student become an adult and we want them to take advantage of these opportunities. So that's why it's really important to start them off strong, make sure that they're passing their classes, and just really understand what opportunities there are ahead. Um, and I, I, you can see below that I, I listed some of those opportunities uh, for their fourth, third and fourth year, so just be aware of those. Next to it on the right side, you'll see these are the specific graduation um, requirements to get out of high school, right? So this is the bare minimum. Um, they need four years of English. And so that's one you know, full credit every single year. So just so you know, um, every semester is a half a credit. Um, and if they fail the class, they don't get the credit. So that's why it's so important to make sure that you know, they're on top of this and they pass all their classes. So um, one full year of a class equals one credit. So English, we need four credits. Math, we, they only need three for graduation purposes. Many um, colleges might ask for a fourth one. So that's where students need to be planning ahead. Uh, science, same thing. Graduation, per, for graduation, they only need those three. For higher education, they might need an extra one. They're, uh, they need to take uh, U.S. government and world geography in their ninth grade year, and then sophomore year, they're going to take a year of U.S. history, junior year is a year of world history, and then their senior year is that one semester of economics. Um, some point over the course of the four years, they will need to take a physical education, and just so you know, Sports, participation in sports does not actually qualify as physical education credit. So it is a PE class here in the school. And then they have to take at least one semester of fine arts CTE. Now CTE is that career technical education. As you saw, we have lots of these opportunities. Um, so that one usually isn't one that people stumble on. 
Um, and then there's that eight and a half electives. That's where you get to play with the um, academy options, the pathways, that sort of stuff. So we encourage your students to take advantage of all that we have to offer. It's really good. It's a great experience for them. In addition to, excuse me, in addition to graduation requirements or the credit requirements, um, the class of 2022 and beyond are also asked to demonstrate competency in both English and math. And that is something that the state has organized and we are working um, with them very closely on making sure that we have as many options uh, available to your students as possible. What's important to know is that this is not your job to track for, for your student. Yes, we want you to be aware, um, and you can always, of course, work with us, but we're not asking you guys to take this on and figure out how your student's gonna get it. We take this, this um, whole menu of options that has been set forth by the state, and we, we offer these to your students. Um, the first and kind of the most universal one that we offer is the SAT in the student's junior year. And as you can see, a little more than halfway down the SAT, if they score a 470 in English and a 500 in math, then they're fine. There is nothing else that they need to do. But in addition to that, we've really started to develop our district capstone. And so we have the capstone built into um, our English class and then our um, we have a math teacher who also coordinates the senior capstone boards um, working with her. And so we have it built into classes. <clears throat> if your student isn't going to take the SAT or if testing just isn't their thing. Um, so those are the top two that we can really focus on. But I assure you, we're keeping track. We're watching how your student is performing. We're watching, um, you know, what their needs are. And so by the time they get into junior year, we'll hopefully <laughs> have them all identified so that we can get them into a pathway so that they they're going or onto a path where they're going to be able to get these requirements and it's not going to be a burden on you or on them so just be aware of it it is here and that we will be tracking and working on this um, I'm not going to go through this specifically but I did want to see want you to see that there are differences between the four-year college it says requirements I missed I think I mistyped that. It's actually recommendations. They're not requirements because colleges can actually um, make their own recommendations. But there's a difference between Jeffco and what four-year universities are asking for. So as you can see, like I mentioned, the math, most of them want that fourth year of math. So that's something to be aware of. Um, uh, at, when a student gets to their senior year, it's important that they're starting to reach out to colleges um, if they are college bound um, and using the tools. We have a lot of online tools that we can help you with um, to find out what that college is going to ask of them. But uh, just be aware that these are the basic of what they're asking. The one that's really important to notice is the world language. For Jeffco, there is no world language requirement to graduate. However, if your child is four-year university bound, it is highly recommended that they take between one and three years of a world language and that it be the same world language. So colleges want to see the, the progression of, you know, your student learning that language and really understanding it. One thing that I know a lot of parents wonder about, maybe your student is coming into high school and they're in Spanish too already. If your student starts at a higher level of that language, the college will take that into account, into consideration. So maybe it's not necessarily all of the years that are listed on their high school transcript, but it's the level that they're at. So if your student gets to, to Spanish three or whatever and goes above, they're gonna see that they obviously have those three years of knowledge. And so um, they'll take the level into consideration more than the years that they spend in it here in high school. Um, next year when your student comes here, just a little recap, these are the classes that they will be scheduled into. Uh, your students, most students at this point have already done their registration. 
um, through a Google form. Some of you guys have seen it. Hopefully all of you guys know what they've chosen. If not, just reach out to me. I'm happy to, to share what they requested. Um, but they're gonna be in English class. They get to choose whether it's gonna be regular honors, social studies, the US government and world geography are the freshman ones. So there's one semester of each. It's not an either or. or. The choice they have is whether or not it's, they wanna take the regular level one or the honors level one. Then science, we have two choices. The, the um, normal level is physical science, which is where you know, the majority of students are going to go into. If your student is strong in science or they really enjoy STEM, we also have the honors option for the integrated STEM science um, there for them. Math, this really depends on what they're taking in eighth grade and how well they're doing. Most students are going to start at Algebra 1. That's the basic freshman year. So if your student is taking Math 8, they're going to go into Algebra 1. If they are currently in eighth grade taking Geometry, or I'm sorry, Algebra, they can choose to go into Geometry or Geometry Honors next year. And then if they're already a rock star and they're, they're knocking out Geometry in eighth grade, then we can have them go into Algebra 2 Honors, which is also kind of an Algebra 2 slash Trig introduction uh, class. So just depending on what they're in and how they're doing uh, is the class, or that's how we determine the level of math that they'll go into. If your student um, is in Algebra or Geometry, we also have some really cool options for them. Um, these are contextual math classes. We have AMPT and GIC. AMPT stands for, I'm gonna mess it up, but it's Algebra and Manufacturing Processes in Entrepreneurial Design. I think I did it. Um, so this is an opportunity, it's two class periods. In one of the class periods, they get that Algebra um, foundation. So they learn the math concepts and really understand. In the other one, they put it to work. Um, and so, you know, they help run our um, print shop and they do, you know, like t-shirt designs and business type of stuff. And they, they actually get their hands on how to produce it and how to market it, how to put it out there and the understanding how algebra plays into it. So it's a really cool um, option if your student is algebra one bound, but remember it takes two class periods. And then GIC is geometry and construction, another super cool contextual uh, math class. Basically it's geometry, one class period, they learn the math portion of it. The next one, they learn how to build using those geometry uh, concepts and they build a house for Habitat for Humanity. They build it out here in the parking lot. Um, I'm not sure where that will go with the new construction, but they do build it here on site um, with supervision of the teacher. And then it gets moved to the site where it is needed. And so it's just a really cool way that these students get to understand math in the real world and they get to see that tangible evidence of what it has produced for them. So if, if you're interested, if your student is hands-on learning, definitely consider one of these classes. And then electives, they'll have three electives each semester. This is where the choice comes into play. They can choose year-long ones or they can choose semester-long ones. It's either three year-long ones or six semester ones, however it works out, but they'll have three each semester. And so we ask them for their, their requests. All right, so how to get help. This is really important. You know, um, one of the greatest skills that your student can learn early on is how to ask for help and how to use the resources. Um, I know it's difficult for teenagers to approach adults and have, you know, conversations, um, but if you can help them feel comfortable walking in and connecting with their teachers and using the resources and encouraging them to work with us. We have so much available to help your students succeed. Um, before school, teachers are here. I mean, I'm speaking in a normal year, you know, COVID threw everyone for a loop, right? But in a normal year, and hopefully this is what next year will look like as well, 
Our teachers are asked to be here at 715 every morning. And the purpose of that is to be available to your students. So your students can come in every morning and go sit with a teacher and get additional help or even just check in and be like, hey, this is where I'm at. Am I doing, am I on track? What's my grade? What can I do? You know, just uh, building those relationships is really, really important. Study hall, um, we do have it. I know that it was not necessarily on the Google form that your student filled out, but if your student wants a study hall, please let me know. I'll put it in their schedule. Um, and I do look at this year. So if they're really struggling this year, um, I will, I might put a study hall on their uh, schedule just to help them out. And please understand that this is a time where they can use in school, they have access to a teacher, they can get extra support, um, and they can work on some of that homework so that it's not all piling up and they're up until all hours of the night having to do it. It's an opportunity here in school that we wanna offer your students. RAM time. Um, as Ms. Owens mentioned, your student's going to be with a teacher um, building that relationship. It's a mentorship relationship. And so, yes, there are going to be lessons and there's going to be class meetings and there's going to be opportunities for, you know, um, to like group work and things like that. But when there are not those things scheduled, it is an opportunity to work on classwork or homework and, and use that teacher for that extra help. Um, after school, you know, you need to make appointments with teachers. Some of our teachers coach or, you know, they have to get out of here to go um, do other things. Um, but if you reach out to a teacher and say, can I come in and can I meet with you after school, they can make appointment with appointments with you. Bottom line is our teachers are available. Um, your students just need to ask and and feel confident in being able to walk in and have these conversations. So um, help them help them do that. The other things we offer, we have Lockheed Martin tutors, which is really cool. They're volunteers from Lockheed Martin. They come in once a week um, and they come into our library in the evening time about this time and anybody is welcome. You can walk in the door, you can go in the library, sit down, have the work available. Obviously they need to see what you're doing, um, but they'll sit there with your student for two, two and a half hours um, and help them figure out what they were doing. And then National Honor Society, we have peer tutors through them. So if you need to, if you want a tutor who's here in the school, who's been through the class, who understands the teachers, the culture, that sort of stuff, we can uh, put in a referral and we have National Honor Society students who can help. And then of course, if you're looking for information, um, the classrooms really have, you know, they have agendas, they have, um, they have directions, they have, uh, support materials. They have all kinds of stuff. So um, make sure that you're referring your student to the Schoology or Google Classroom as well as the teacher uh, websites. There's a lot of information out there. It's easy to miss because there is a lot, but um, it's out there for you to utilize. Okay, this is really important. Um, freshman year is a very, very, very pivotal year in high school. Um, I've come across many students in my day where it's like, oh, I still got four years. I'm okay if I don't do this one. If I don't complete it, I'll get it. The, real, the reality is that once somebody falls behind, it's really, really hard for them to catch up. And so um, the more that you can help your student organize, help your student um, utilize the resources, uh, the better chance they have at really excelling and getting to take advantage of all of those great opportunities um, later on. Uh, wrong keyboard. Uh, the GPA, like um, Ms. Owens mentioned, the grade point average, it's the grades that they get that are averaged together on a um, numerical uh, scale. So basically, freshman year counts just as much as junior and senior year. Um, and actually, I, I might even argue to say a little bit more because when a student is in their freshman year, they have fewer classes to, to factor into that average. Whereas, you know, if I have a junior or senior coming to me and going, oh, I didn't realize I really did want to go to, you know, this school or I do want to do this and they're asking me to have this certain grade point average, how do I bring it up? 
there's far less opportunity later in school to bring it up just because there's more classes averaged in. So um, it's harder to move the later we get. So um, help encourage them to start out strong. It's really, really important. Um, obviously, credit deficiency is definitely one of the leading, I don't know if causes, but um, avenues uh, to students giving up hope. Um, and dropping out. And so we want to do everything we can to help them before it ever gets to that um, to that point. So use us um, and encourage them to continue to do well. If your student is credit deficient, this is really important to know. Um, we have op options, okay? Um, it does become credit recovery, credit recovery costs. Um, and so it's it's kind of a big pain in the butt at that point. Um, because it's on top of the classes that they're already in. And so it becomes a burden on time, it becomes a financial burden. Um, but please understand that we do want to make sure that they have all the options possible. So we have credit recovery through us. It's through a system called Edgenuity. It's 100% online. We, ours costs $150 a class as of now, um, depending on, you know, uh, the year and funds and things like that, that can fluctuate a little bit, but we've been able to keep it right around that 150. Um, we have summer school options. So uh, here at Green Mountain, we have a, um, a boot camp uh, available. So it's two weeks where they can make up to two classes. It's really intense. They're here all day, every day, um, and there's somebody monitoring every step of the way, but we can offer the opportunity for them to make it up. Um, in that short amount of time if they're really uh, ready to just knock it out. Now, Jeffco Virtual Academy also offers a six-week course. It's a little less intense. You can get the two classes at that point. Normally, it's $165 per class in the summer with them. I know that this year specifically, uh, Jeffco is sponsoring uh, sun summer school and it is free this year. I don't know how that's gonna play out in future years, um, but due to COVID and some of that federal funding that's come in, they've been able to make uh, summer school available and free to people this summer. Uh, so just to be aware of. And then during the school year, Jeffco Virtual also offers classes. If your student takes a credit recovery class, um, in like during the school year, the cost comes down considerably and that's because they don't have to pay their teacher outside of contract hours. Um, but it becomes $20 a course, but it again, it is that constraint on time because in addition to all the classes they're taking here, they're also taking this additional class. Um, and then a couple of other online options that are completely independent of Jeffco in like entirely. We have Keystone Online School and then we also have Sterling Online Academy that some students have found um, that they do well in. So there's options, we'll work with you, but our hope is that um, we don't get to that point. So however we can help, let us know. All right, just a little bit of a comparison. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this, but I do want you to see um, kind of the, the struggle to bring up a GPA versus the struggle or whatever to keep um, a solid GPA. So as you can see on the left-hand side, a student starts off in ninth grade, they may have gotten a 1.8 GPA, um, didn't really focus all that well, you know, had, you know, had a tough time organizing, whatever. So they struggled that year, but then they, they turned it around and they really wanted to get a 3.0 GPA to get in their top school. Um, well, as you can see, as you go through the years to do that, they have to, you know, 2.7 the next year, 3.9 11th grade, you know, and a 3.6, that'll get you to a 3.0. So you're really coming from a deficit at that point. Whereas um, student two on the right, if you maintain that B average um, for that 3.0, uh, all four years, it's not making up lost ground and it doesn't become uh, difficult. It's not difficult to do, it's just maintenance. So um, it's way better to start them off um, at that higher level so that we don't have to dig out. All right, executive functioning is a really, really important skill that is hard to instill in teenagers, but vital to the success of high school. Um, executive functioning is basically that 
organizational, like the, or, the ability to, to organize, to plan ahead, to, um, to, to predict what they have to do, to understand uh, what's going around, on around them so that they can follow the directions, you know, they can handle their emotions and they really have control of their learning. There are seven skills that they should have. Adaptable thinking, as you can see, is problem solving. Can your student adjust to situations when they have to, even if it feels, um, even if it's frustrating, even, even if it's difficult, can your student adjust to that situation? Planning, thinking about the future. So we talk a lot about, you know, in the future, here's graduation, you know, you gotta get to this point and blah, blah, blah. Four years feels like a lifetime when you walk in these doors for the first time. And so planning doesn't have to be as big as four years down the road. Planning can be as big as tomorrow. You know, like, are you gonna be able to get up tomorrow? Feed yourself breakfast, get all of your uh, homework organized, bring it in, you know, just, just being able to plan how they're going to get, up, get through whatever the next step is, okay? So, and I work with a lot of students on this, so come talk to me. Uh, Self-monitoring, you know, can they really self-evaluate and understand how they are performing on this whatever task is at hand? So self-reflection, you know, so do they get their part in it and ownership? Self-control, restraining from those, you know, outbursts physically, emotionally, just that impulse control. Mem working memory, so retaining that information that they're getting. So are they able to keep that, you know, take notes? How are they going to organize that information so that they can use it moving forward in the classes, homework, so on and so forth. Time management, this is huge. Um, the ability obviously to organize your schedule, complete the tasks on time um, and, and be able to stay patient through all of it. This is really important. This is hard for many adults. So something to really focus on. There are, um, a lot of tools out there uh, to help with this. So um, I'm always happy to, to show some ideas, but there's a lot of you know tech tools, specifically just off topic for right now, but I discovered one recently, you may wanna uh, write this down. It's called eGenda and it's actually a phone app. Um, and in that eGenda, you can put your classes in there and then every day your student can go in and say, okay, here's what homework I have. I have a quiz coming up. I have this and that. It sends reminders to their phones. It pops up as a notification and it helps them really organize what they need to do and how much they have each day. So um, remember eGenda, that's my new favorite tool that I, I use with my own kids at home um, as young as fifth grade, like it, it's just great, so. Um, and even on that organization, uh, the, you know, you're efficiently arranging materials and thoughts um, in that orderly fashion so that you're following along, doing what you need to and not forgetting any parts of it. So, and there you go. Um, so, teenage years. I don't know if there is any normal in teenage years. So if you haven't raised a teenager yet, welcome to the roller coaster. Um, I love teenagers. I, this is by far my favorite age in life. And you know, some people think that's awesome. Some people are like, I don't know what you're doing, but um, there's no normal. You kind of don't know what comes from one day to the next. And so, you know, these are just a few ideas. I'm not gonna read through everything, but just so you know, as they're starting to step into high school, how is their brain changing? You know, they're, they're not quite as concrete. It's not black and white. They're starting to think outside themselves now, um, reflecting, um, really understanding how their emotions and, and their beliefs are, are integrated into their friends and the, the community around them. Um, and then obviously school is becoming a lot more challenging because we're diving deeper into the content, you know, and so we're, we're pushing them to think higher, higher level. And so um, just be aware that as they step into high school, there's going to be so many changes that come with it, um, which is why, you know, we're all here to support. So, but there's no normal. So expect the unexpected, I guess. Um, 
self-concept is really starting to develop in ninth grade and high school and so on and so forth. Um, teenagers, they're looking for, they, they want to understand their place in this world. You know, what makes them stand out from people, but also what makes, helps them connect with people and why do, you know, why does so-and-so like that person, but they don't like me? Um, and so there's a lot of that reflection and that there's confusion that comes with it, but, but really understanding how they're playing into it and what their place is in the world. And that can be a hard place to be. Um, because one day you find that you fit and the end of the next day you don't. And so it's, it's really up and down. Um, personalities, like, you know, like it says here, um, one of the interesting things is, is you'll see them change drastically over the four years um, in some cases where they're just trying to fit, try on those different personalities and really find out what feels good and feels right and fits what they need and who they want to be. So um, this is a time of exploration and growth and it's exciting and it's also confusing and difficult at times, but teenagers, I love them. Um, parents, as they're going through all of this and on top of it, trying to navigate how to do school, right? So imagine I need to do all of my homework, but I also have all of these emotions going up and down and my friends are saying this one thing and, but then I forgot to do my homework and there's so much going on, right? So it, it's not an easy time, but you guys have, you guys can definitely help them. Um, checking infinite campus regularly, looking at their grades, please understand. Um, the expectation is that teachers update uh, infinite campus like once a week. And so it's not real time but that is where you're going to find the most accurate grade. So making sure you're checking that infinite campus um, and do it with your student if, you, if they're willing, just because that helps open that dialogue. Uh, Google Classroom and Schoology, you guys, parents don't have access to, like directly to the classroom. Um, it's just something, it's the, the way the program is set up, um, it's just something that, that's built in, but what I encourage you guys to do from the very beginning, work with your student, log in, because in those classrooms, you can see real time, was an assignment turned in late? Are they missing anything? Are there notes that or messages that are being sent to the student from the teacher that, that they need to pay attention to? Um, and you can see the class material. You can really see, um, you can see their agenda, you can see the lessons from that day, you can see their PowerPoints, you can see the work that's being done. So if you can get your student to do this with you, um, that is absolutely the best way to have a, an avenue into what's going on. The other thing is getting, helping them get involved. Um, I'm gonna, I have a couple slides for you coming up that it lists all of the activities. Obviously, I, I'm not gonna go through all of them. <laughs> There's a lot but we have all of this information linked on our website so get familiar with our website but getting your students involved in the academy program the activities clubs and sports that is absolutely the best way to help them acclimate um, it helps them build community it connects them with teachers mentors um, it really makes them feel like they are a contributing part of the school and so if you can get your student involved in something um, i encourage you to do that from the very get-go talking to them about their future and their goals, just helping them have that dialogue. It's not that they have to know what they're going to be when, you know, the moment they walk out of here, but just helping them understand that part of figuring that out is having this dialogue and understanding that it's a process, you know, so um, encourage them to meet with me. Uh, I'm always happy to meet with students. I love getting to know them. My goal is to know or to meet with every one of them at the beginning of the year. Uh, hold me to that because <laughs> it's a hard one to do, but um, I do hope that, that that's my goal for next year is to know every one of your students. Um, but have them come talk to me. You know, that way they're, they're connected and they understand what's expected of them and they can start to um, ask those questions and take ownership those executive functioning skills like I, I said and then like um, and then finally just helping them have these conversations get to know their teachers counselors the admin um, 
we're, we don't bite. I promise there might be somebody having a grumpy day and I understand that happens, but we love our students. And so we want to know them. And so please help them um, have these conversations with people um, and encourage them to reach out to us. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I do want you guys to have a visual of how many clubs that we have already um, in place. We are also always welcome um, to start something new. If your student wants to try on something that they've seen somewhere else or they wanna help sponsor or organize a club, let an adult know. We'll help you find a scholar or a sponsor and we'll do what we can to get your student um, a space, a time, a sponsor, um, and we'll see what we can do to get others recruited into it. So um, if there's not one on here that they, they love, but they have an idea for something else, let us know. Um, athletics are also a good opportunity for this. Um, not only is it a connection into the school and teams, it's also a, a way to hold them to an academic standard. So, you know, students have to be passing their classes to participate. And so when somebody has to sit out because they have an F or they have two Fs or whatever, um, it's hard because you're watching your, your classmates and your teammates get to do what you love while you have to sit out because you forgot to do your homework that week, you know? So it holds them to that standard, which is really important as well. So if, they're, if they want to try something out, um, tell them to try out for a sport. Um, a, a little bit additional to what you guys can do, um, just talking to your students. I'm going to say like 99% of the time, you'll probably get the, mom, stop. <laughs> um, but just continuing that conversation because the message you're sending to them by asking them consec or, um, consistently is that you're there you're listening, you're present, you care. And one day when your child needs something, they will know that you're there and they're, you're listening. And so just continue to do that even when it gets frustrating or difficult because I think it's really important to keep that connection open. Um, know who your students' friends are. It's a hard time to really know everything, right? Or every single person your students around, but the more you know about who they hang out with, I think the more success you will find in helping them navigate. Um, and then setting boundaries and expectations, clear consequences for misbehavior, you know, holding your student accountable at home um, is, a, is very, very important as far as, you know, like making sure, don't let them off the hook. You know, if they miss their homework, um, have a consequence, make sure that they follow through. I promise as difficult it is, as it is for us parents to, to see our students or our children upset or um, disappointed, I promise it pays out on the, um, on the back end because it means that they are going to be set into this world with skills that are necessary in college, in work, um, and they're the ones who are accountable and have those, those uh, skills and knowledge. So uh, definitely be clear, set boundaries, um, make sure that they are following through. Um, additionally, I'll go through these really quick. Uh, just making sure that, you know, they're, they're getting additional help. Uh, there's free, uh, uh, free tutoring site right there if you want to do it over the summer. Um, making sure that they have a study space in your home, not sitting on their bed with, you know, earbuds in and their phone up, making sure that there's a desk that's accessible that you can see, um, that they know that this, this is where I do my homework um, and they get it done. In this online world, I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with parents who are just fed up because, you know, like, yeah, he's on the computer, he's doing this work, he says he's getting it done, but oh, wait, he's on YouTube, or she's playing video games, or, you know, whatever it is. So um, just being consistent and having kind of an eye, eye on what's going on is important as well. Scheduling and routine, cannot stress this one enough. Um, COVID, this whole pandemic was really tough on people because of that loss of routine. And so the motivation, motivation comes from like boundaries, routine, expectations, and understanding what, what they need to do. And so when they have that routine and understand what comes next, I promise 
their work will definitely improve because of it. So helping them develop that and prioritize uh, that routine. Uh, we don't have a supplies list. Um, just make sure that they have everything they need for their classes. The, the teachers will let them know. But at the same time, if you ever need help, if, if your student doesn't have something, we have an entire room filled with all kinds of school supplies here. Um, so send them my way. I will happily share the wealth and give you guys what you need. Um, online resources, lots of those. Uh, we have the counseling website. Uh, I, I'm going to update a lot with, you know, post-secondary stuff, uh, what's coming up next, um, meeting things. I'm going to put this on there, um, this presentation. Um, just making sure that you're keeping up with what's coming out. Infinite Campus is a very important uh, tool, like I said, make sure that you're, you're checking that pretty regularly, as well as down at the bottom, there's the Schoology and Google Classrooms. Jeffco Connect, um, make sure that that is updated because we need to have current phone numbers, we need to have current addresses, email addresses. Uh, that's how we get information out to you guys. And the other thing is, if your student has a phone number, I highly encourage you guys to put that in there because instead of us knocking down your door, I can give them a call and just be like, hey, why aren't you at school today? Or hey, did you get this done? Um, so if we have that information, if you put it in Infinite Campus, it's really helpful to us. Um, so just consider that. And then Jeff Co-Generations. And so I'm going to actually pass this one back over to Miss Owens. <laughs> Sorry, got you off guard. Yeah, no, it's fine. For the question about the AP classes in the chat, um, once when I'm done here in a second, we're going to actually uh, link in our course catalog to the chat so then you guys can access the lists of all of our AP honors, concurrent enrollment, the whole course catalog. So you can reference that. So we'll get that in there in just one second. Um, but so a few years ago, Jeffco um, redesigned their, their vision and they call it Jeffco Generations. And um, the generations are, are multiple things, but one of the key components are the Jeffco Generation skills. And they are actually quite a few things that Ms. Ankai has already addressed um, in her presentation tonight. Uh, but these are things that we were actually very excited a few years ago when this came out because we have already had our academy program for 10 plus years. And when this vision came out, it aligned extremely well with what we've already been doing. But I uh, just wanted you to be aware of Jeffco Generation skills, Jeffco Generations in general. And to be honest, um, when we do our parent survey every year, uh, the district ask, actually asks you guys the question, um, have you ever heard of Jeffco Generations? And our parents pretty much always say no. <laughs> so we are trying to beef up our communication to you that there is Jeffco Generations. It is really important and it actually fits in really well with what we do. So just wanted to get that in there tonight. Thanks, Kim. Um, okay, so I want to play this for you. Uh, it's the Chromebook Initiative. I know that our school or our district, your, your students probably have all gone through the, the Chromebook program um, and so know more than I do about it at this point in time. Um, but I do want to share a little bit about the Green Mountain uh, Chromebook Initiative. So I think I need to get out of here to play this. Maybe, or do I need to be presenting? Me and technology, obviously I need to watch the, <laughs> the video. Oh, there. Hi, Justin, families and students. It's Ms. Bazzetti, your Green Mountain High School Digital Teacher Librarian. I'm excited to welcome you all to Green Mountain next year. In this short little presentation, I'll give you some information about the Tech for Ed one-to-one -one Chromebook program, what types of services you can find in our library, and finally, about my role in assisting students with digital creation tools and online research. One of the most common questions I get with our freshman families every year centers around the district's one-to-one -one Chromebook program. Each year, all fifth and ninth grade students across the district get issued a Chromebook. 
families do not have to purchase a Chromebook. Rather, it is a fee that all families across the district help support. Even me, with the third grader, pays a technology Hey, we lost audio. I'm so sorry. Students bring their district issued Chromebook every day, fully charged and in the case in which it was issued. In August, when students get their devices, we will also send home information about the ADP warranty program, which covers accidental damage. It is optional, but something that we encourage families to purchase as it will cover the device for all four years. To find out more information about the district's one-to-one -one program, you can go to the district website and search Tech for Ed, or go to our Green Mountain High School website, hover over the Family tab, and click the one-to-one -one Chromebook menu option. That will bring you to a website that has information about the program, warranties, repair, digital safety, and tutorials for students about how to run their Google application. When you do come into the building next semester or in August, you will find our library located off of the main commons and new hallways. It is a place where students love to congregate before school. During the day, many students study in the library on their off block. It, of course, is a place where you can check out physical books. And if reading ebooks is your thing, you can find thousands on our library catalog. To find our library website, go to the Green Mountain High School website, click on the Academics tab, and select Library in the drop-down menu. I encourage you to bookmark our library website as it will give you lots of information, not only about books, but about the research databases. The library is often used by students when they need to print, which, by the way, you'll be able to do directly from your district-issued Chromebook. Finally, the library is a place where you'll go if your Chromebook needs repaired. This is my favorite part about my job. As a digital teacher librarian, I get to help students with digital creation tools. So what that means is I'm often invited to co-teach classes. And when students are doing research or a project, I help them maneuver digital creation tools and online research databases. So for example, if students are researching different forensic cases, I'll teach them how to access credible sources through the Jeffco Public Library's databases. Then, when students have to synthesize their research into an engaging video to teach the rest of their classmates about their case, I'll assist students with the Wii Video Creation Tool. Students often come to the library to work on their digital projects. And it's not uncommon to see groups recording podcasts after school, printing articles to read at home, or working with classmates on projects. Thank you for allowing me to present what to expect next year, and welcome to our Green Mountain High School family. We'll have more information to come about the Chromebook distribution night in August. And if you're interested in learning more about the Tech for Ed district program, the links are below. Since they are quite lengthy, simply search Jeffco Public Schools Tech for Ed in your favorite search engine. As always, please feel free to reach me via email or voicemail at any time. And I look forward to meeting you all soon. Take care, future Rams. All right. Oh, I didn't mean to start that again, sorry. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm going to stop recording so that we can um, address some of the questions that are coming up in the chat. I do apologize as I'm sharing my screen, I can't actually see the chat. So I wanna make sure that we um, address everything that's coming um, coming up. So I am going to- Ms. Onkai. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple here that I can help with. Oh, great. Uh, one of the questions